I know that so many of you are business builders, you're building businesses. Some of you, you have already built businesses. Some of you, like you have built empires, but in one way or another, you feel like there's, you know, a hoovering something over your head. I pray for clarity and I pray that your relationship will fall in place like a puzzle that falls in place like this. And then you look back and you're like, eh, but for the past five years, things have been bad. But all of a sudden, things are good. Do you know there are certain miracles that God can do? God knocks someone's head and is like, Tere and all of a sudden now come on some of us still believe in miracles so i am believing on your behalf i know some of you are like mm, it's okay I will, <laughs> I will believe on your behalf all right and um Let's just uh, go to today's uh, teaching and uh, part uh, the first teaching, which is more of the spiritual psychology about the people help us because we know we cannot help people without the, the, the empowerment, right? We cannot help people about the empowerment. And this actually reminds me about, um, about when Jesus left the disciples when he was actually uh, in uh, ascending. He was like, do not leave the upper room until you are empowered. And I remember on Monday we actually talked about it together with our staff when we were in our devotion or our altar and we were talking about like what does it actually mean to be empowered okay and to be empowered uh, we discovered that God is the creator Jesus is the redeemer but the Holy Spirit is the empower the one who empowers okay so now when I actually was sat down and I was thinking about today I thought back at my life and what I have gone through during the series of building the business during the series of building the mentorship during the series of everything it's not like there are no battles that I have fought I have fought so many battles but one thing is God kept telling me that you have been equipped there is nothing that is going to stand in your way that is going to actually fail you so that means I conceived I got this kind of confidence and contentment in my heart that by the way the battles are going to come it's not that they are not going to come okay there are people that i am going to i i, I am going to um to work hard towards or to help and maybe things are going to go bad like things are are going to go wrong somewhere somewhere and maybe i will want to hit certain business goals and maybe those business goals will not come in time maybe there will be attacks by the way left right and center and so when i got the confidence that by the way i am equipped and the equipping is not the theory the equipping is not just the, the pr coaching practice and then the content creation and then the digital marketing. That the equipping is actually the actual power to be able to persevere, to be able to break through and to be able to keep going. Otherwise, for the past 18 years, 15 years, maybe I would have given up somewhere. I would have said, but you know what, these things are a bit slow. I would have said, but ah, you know, I, I am seeking to help, but it seems some people are misunderstanding me. You get it. So that means this is not a journey for the weary. This is not a journey for the people that are going to give up. All right? So that is why we need the empowerment and the equipping. And I pray that we can have that confidence today and know that every battle that is going to come our way is something that we have been equipped to actually fight and to be able to, uh, to overcome. All right? And um, for some of us, I think one of us will actually um, help me um, open this up. That is Nehemiah 4.17. Uh, Nehemiah 417 if we get a chance we'll be able to read it but one thing is we have how many of you here call yourself dreamers like you are the kinds who dream and dream big things and you know <laughs> visionary not just dreamers of normal dreams that you're sleeping but you have you envision yourself like you know in spaces and in places and it's like a driving force in your life so do you see that uh, that is uh, 417. Yes, 417. Do you see that most of the times when you have that kind of dream in your heart, it's not by sight. That your dreams that can contradict with what you're actually going through right now. Your dreams can contradict your lifestyle. They can contradict the kind of money that you have. They can contradict the kind, like everything. And someone can even look at you and say, but ah, you think those things are attainable. Just imagine if you dare tell someone, like I told people at the onset of this, and I told them that, you know what, I'm going to create a private practice. Everyone, huh? Eh? What? What is a <laughs> As in, the jaws were dropping. Why? Because I looked like some, a zombie who was speaking from planet. I don't know which planet. Because I also got to know the word private practice, and I was like, Kali, I'm going to do a private 
practice. In Kampala, definitely, they only knew lawyers that do have private farms. So, and there were no coaches that I even knew about that were even doing uh, counseling or coaching. So now, me, I'm just speaking my thing. So you realize that my dream was not by sight, that my eyes could see the now, but my heart could actually see my next and where I was going. That even when the people around me did not believe, that even when they laughed, even when they mocked, even when they said, you know, she has gone mad. I think she has overread things. She has over, you know, consumed the internet, you know, and by that time, internet was just beginning, by the way. I think they were like, you know what, internet, you know, so we would rather help her. Some of them actually helped me by leaving me alone. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, some of them helped me by abandoning me and dumping me like a hot potato. You know how you, uh, have you ever dumped a hot potato? Yeah. <laughs> like as soon as you touch it like this, you're like, ah. <laughs> so some of them were like, you know what, <laughs> this one, <laughs> she will end up in Butavika. Let's just distance ourselves. Most of the family members, I think some of them at some point will be like, that, that one is a distance, distance, what? We even don't know about her. <laughs> Why? Because like it just sounded so funny. But I will tell you, I meant what I said. So if after 15 years, I am still on the same trajectory, I have actually succeeded at creating it and it lasting for 15 years, then who has the last laugh? Mm? <laughs> As in, and definitely because I'm a people helper, I'm, going, I'm not going to say, ha, I told you, <laughs> I told you, no, I'm not going to say that. So if the, the ones that dumped me like a hot potato when they come right now, you, I embrace and I'm like, you know what, where should we start? What do you want us to talk about? That now they can eventually trust that you can actually speak into their lives. All right. So the dreaming the vision we don't see by sight and i don't want you to live by sight because so many of us the things that discourage us is by sight what we see today you're like ah i don't think i am making it in life i don't i th i see other people they are ahead so i really don't know how i'm going to even catch up do you know that some of us when we are in these groups for accountability when you see others posting posting oh gamba mama ah well now what should we do <laughs> hmm? Like seriously, instead of being inspired, you get it. As in, in your heart of hearts, oh, Gamba, oh my goodness, I just hope that coach does not think I am there, yeah. just there. <laughs> you know, I, Gamba, I hope one day she does not come to my inbox to ask what I am doing. <laughs> you will never see me in your inbox, but I will pray for you that God will haunt, will haunt you. Part of what we are going to talk about, some of those things, let me tell you, your dream is not your dream. It is God's dream that he actually placed into you. It is not your dream. It is not. Because when we read about Nehemiah, Nehemiah was in exile. Because they used to take the best, you know, the excellent, intelligent kind of um, people. And when they took them into exile, they would make them like the servants of the king or something like that. Now that was Nehemiah. So he has been blessed that yes, he's in exile, but he's busy serving the king. And all of a sudden, he has this dream in his heart. And the dream, by the way, will make you peaceless and restless. That even how you look will change. Because when the king looked at Nehemiah, he was like, but what's wrong? Your countenance, the way you look, seems like something is off. And then that is when he opens up and he's like, but Jerusalem is in ruins, you know? Things are not going the way they are supposed to go. Now, he has a dream to go back and actually build Jerusalem. He has a dream to go back and do something about the situation that has gone on. But I want us to be honest in this season, okay, to be very honest enough to know that so many things are not going the way we want them to go, but there is a dream that is inside of our hearts. And some of us have a, 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 a picture. It could be vague, but a picture of where we want to go. Some of you, I think, like Arinda, has a picture of an empowerment, you know, place like a, 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 a land that has been bought and you have, been, you have built. And maybe there are women that come. Those that can't go back to their homes can be rehabilitated. And, you know, training women in different skills and stuff like that so that you can empower them to go and take care of their children. I mean, it's possible that it's not going to happen right now, but it's possible that in five years she can actually be there. And she, sometimes you get to something and you're like, 
I have ever dreamt about the same thing. I don't know if some of you have those things. For me, it's more like deja vu. Sometimes I relive moments and it feels like I have ever lived them. And yet it was a dream, not even when I was sleeping, but something I sat, a fantasy, a dead dream. Where you sit and you dead dream, no womereza, you even smile, like you see it, it, it has come to pass, you know? And let me tell you, the, the worst thing is for someone to pull you out of that daydream and show you the reality of what you are going through, that you even don't have food or that, you know, things are not going well. But you have that vague picture. It's not, it's not clear, but you're like, you know what? One day I am actually going to be there, I am going to reach there. And let me tell you, that one day is going to come to pass. For each one of us that is in this place and for each one of us that believes, that sees through the eyes of faith and not through the eyes of your, eye, your, your, your eyes, your heart has to know that, by the way, yes, I am, the sight is I am seeing these things, but my heart, there is a vision. And I'm walking towards that vision with my eyes opened. Whatever I'm going to do, I am going to do while I am going forward and I am not leaving it at anything. All right? So... I told you that your situations are not going to align with your vision. Whatever you see in your heart is not going to align with where you are. But that doesn't mean that it will never come to pass. So I need you to build. I need you to create content. I need you to open that shop. I need you to, whatever it is, take that course, learn that skill, whatever it is. While you are building on that dream that no one believes in but you. And say that one day I am going to be on top of this mountain. And people will ask me, how did you get on top of those mountains? And they'll be like, but I took a course here. But I kept going even when things were bad. But I kept showing up even when the world did not expect me to show up. I kept, as in, you, in your heart of hearts, you know that, by the way, those small steps compounded into a bigger effect. And now, all of a sudden, you are on top of the mountain. You're also holding other people's hands and helping them. All right? So even if it does not align, one thing that you should be able to ask yourself, what if that dream dream is not just your dream? What if that dream is not just something that you thought about, that you concocted? Because I believe for me that it was not something that I concocted. So that means I did not just dream for the sake of dreaming. No. God was up to something. He was engineering something. He was building something in my life, but he needed me to imagine things that were bigger than where I was. Because had I imagined, and I think I've told you this, had I imagined things that were within the confinements of where I was, I would have been on my fifth marriage. Yeah. Because I would be running away from home because there is no food. I would be running away. I told you at one point I was like, ha, you get married and then you go and toko satoke and you're in a mozigo. You know when the devil brings those scenarios and you're like, the best thing that can happen to you right now is matoke and binyebwa, an addition of matoke and binyebwa. That is the best thing that can happen on a mozigo somewhere. Why? Because that is all I'm exposed to. You get it? But while I am thinking about that, I am tired of the scenario, but I'm also denying access to other men who want me. By the way, who even have money? By the way, I even had the audacity of being picky. <laughs> you know when you're poor and picky? <laughs> that is a very terrible combination. As in, I think some of the men were like, but she's running, running, where? <laughs> where is she going? You get it? But in my heart of hearts, do you know that I had the audacity to dream and think about what I really want, that whatever I didn't want was background noise. That whenever I looked at you and you, would, you do not fit in my life, in a poor girl's life, like you do not fit, I would not even give you a minute of my life. And I will tell you, there is someone who even jubilated, by the way. When I got heartbroken, because they had tried and had not given them a chance. And so, eventually, when I got heartbroken, they were like, ah, Let's see her. Let's see where, <laughs> where she's going. She was on top of the world and, you know, she was thinking while he was jubilating. In my heart of hearts, I was like, even if they get the whole world and all the riches and they still put them on your head, even if you came right now, in my heartbrokenness, I cannot even give you a second of my time. Now, that is how terrible it is. Have you ever been picky? I'm the only one who, has, who had a problem. Wanji? 
But do you know that sometimes I now I look back and I'm like, God did not let certain things come into my life because he knew they had no part in my story. He knew they would come and jeopardize. Maybe they would come and make me settled. They would come and, and he just made me adamant. Like I was very adamant. But the Bible talks about it. Like adamant. Like a lion's... You, like he hardened my heart. And right now when I look back, like I am so thankful. I am so thankful. So sometimes being picky is not bad. But I'm not telling you to be picky, guys. <laughs> I'm not telling you to be picky. Okay? So that dream is not your dream. One thing I know for sure is the dream I had in my heart was not my dream. It was God that placed that dream inside of me. And he didn't want me to treat it as an option. And I hope that you do not treat your, or your dream as an option. I hope that you give it priority. And being that you are in this place, that means you have given it priority. But nothing should ever tempt you to give your dream or to make your dream an option. Okay? You always, uh, when something is uh, it's, it's an option, you will always feel like, I can always get to it. Some of you have dismissed your gifts like that. I can always get to it. I will do it when I find the time. No. When God gives, uh, puts a dream inside of you, he wants it now. That is why some of you could not sleep, could not settle, because you feel there's something more inside of me, and so I must be able to get to where I really want to get. So now I want, to know, I want us to know the difference between what is optional activity, because some of us are in optional activities, and versus what is your responsibility. Because now when God deposits a dream inside of you, it becomes your responsibility to develop, to nurture and to deploy. It becomes your responsibility that he has put the blueprint, he has given you the, the dream, he has given you the vision, and now he says, work on it now. Do not wait until tomorrow. Do not wait until next year. Do not wait until someone encourages you. Work on it now. Some of the things in your heart, do you know that at some point, I was like, is this selfish ambition? I told you uh, how um, uh, my husband wanted me to do finance, and then me, I wanted uh, guidance and counseling. And so at some point I was like, but I think I am lying to myself. I think this is just being selfish. I think it's better I go with what I have been told to actually go with. But do you know what? When I got to the board, I looked like this. I looked past everything and looked at what I wanted. That's exactly what I applied for. You get it? Why? Because some of these things, it overwhelms you. You never shake it. How many of us have had a feeling that you cannot shake? Like, you just can't let it go. You have tried year after year, and that should tell you it is not your dream. God placed it inside of you, and he wants to do something with it. That is why it is not leaving your mind. Every time, when you look at other people's posts, you're like, I should be the one doing this. When you look at other people's progress, you're like, doing events, you're like, I should be the one. I should be planning something. You write, write with things, and then you even forget where you wrote them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm speaking to some of you. You know, you have dreams, you have written them down, you think about them, you even plan with someone, you go, come. And you tell them about the dream. Now this person also becomes bugging. But, but you told me you're going to do this. <laughs> and then in, 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 because you're going through a situation, you're, but you opened your mouth and told it to someone. And God is using someone for accountability. And now they have to remind you every day, okay? But why, why can't we do You said you're going to write a book. You said you're going to open up that business. You said you're going to do... And let me tell you, sometimes God can conspire that you will even see a signpost that has the exact name of the business that you wanted to. I was like, hey, like God is ambushing me from all sides. You enter a certain church or even you go on TikTok and someone is speaking exactly like, and you're like, but why isn't the world leaving me? You know, I'm supposed to be giving up, but no one is letting me give up, you know? And sometimes, by the way, you go back home and even your husband tells you, but there's a lot of greatness inside of you. And you're like, okay, now, if anyone speaks about greatness one more time, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> one more time, I will lose it. Why? Because people see it. You have also felt it. You know it. But you don't have the guts. It's like a, a woman that is pregnant and you're like, for the rest of my life. Yeah, that is what some of us are doing. You're conceived. Yeah? 
and you have the gift inside of you, the baby has grown, and God is saying it's time for... Today I was watching a certain TikTok video and there was this baby that was holding the doctor's glove. I don't know whether you have ever seen that. And the baby is like, but how did I enter this world? Where did, where did I pass? Now, some of us, our babies are like, it is time. And you see how like a, a, a pregnant woman, that when it gets to nine months, whether you don't feel like pushing, the contractions will come. D does anyone invite the, the contractions? They, apart from people who get induced, okay, but still even then that shows you that there's a problem, that this baby has to be born and they have reached the deaths and nothing is coming and they're like, let's give it two days. If contractions are not coming, we are going to induce or we are taking you to theater so that we will actually, so there is always a plan. God has a plan of how that gift is supposed to appear on earth and let me tell you, he's not saying that, oh, it's supposed to appear in, 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 in luxury. No. Jesus was born in the manger. I think they literally had to borrow busuka, you know, to make sure that he actually comes. But he had come. So I need you to let your gift out, okay? To let your gift out. Whatever it is, whether it's a business, whether it's coaching, whether it's public speaking, some of you have the fear of people, the self-doubt, the lack of confidence, all that is actually holding you back. You're like, ah, I don't think it's, it's time yet. I don't think. Now, there are people who are, I was actually talking to someone recently and I was telling them, eh, it's okay, you have supported so many people, but God did not call you in the industry of support. Yeah? I was point blank because I know this person is seated on greatness. When they get a microphone to speak, like you will even be alarmed. But guess what? Support is nice. They are supporting everyone. They are being there for everyone. And they are saying, but you know what? I just feel that there is something missing. Give back to that baby even when there is something missing. You will figure it out. Right? You will figure it out. So ambition is not evil. Do you know that you can't do anything without ambition? You can't help anyone without ambition. You can't open a business without ambition. Some of us have been told that ambition is bad. Ambition is not bad. If you want to build anything, be it a business, be it a marriage, be it, you must be ambitious to do something good in order for you to go ahead and be able to do what you, uh, you actually need to do. All right? And then something else that I sat down because I have been looking at my life and saying that God did not give me what I want because even when I was praying, you know, these prayers that we make, oh, make me great, you know, <laughs> make rich, yeah? Uh, I know some of us are praying those, those prayers, you know, make me this. No, I think he would, the simplest thing he would have done is to make me those things. But I think it's last week when I told you that God is not a crane that is going to move you from here and then he's going to dump you here and then you're going to say, oh, look what the Lord has done. That is not what. <laughs> he takes you through the process so that when you get into things, it's unbelievable that you actually reach there. But he gave me the desire and the want to do things. Now that desire is when he says, I will give you the desires of your hearts. What he is saying is, I will respond to every prayer that you have ever made. You get it? So now, he gives me the desire, the desire to, to want to help people, the desire to speak into people's lives. Now, it's through that desire, by me implementing that desire, that everything comes to fulfillment, that everything he has promised. So he's not going to give you whatever you're praying for, whatever you've been praying for, right? He's not going to give you exactly what you are praying for. No. He's going to give you the desire that is going to help you in the process to implement, to be the doer, to open the business, to be, because he said, I will bless the works of your hands. So when he gives you the, the desire to do something, that means you're going to get your hands dirty and start something, open that business, and then when you claim for the blessing and say, you said you will bless the works of my hands, my business is open and I am showing up every day and I am creating the content, I am doing marketing and sales, I am going for networking events, I am showing up the way I need to show up. Before you know it, you're signing on a client. Before you know it, one client has become five clients. Before you know it, and now God is fulfilling your prayer. But for some of us, we think they are going to be miracles that are going to be like uh, popcorns. No, they are not going to come like that. The money that you want is not going to look like popcorn when you've locked yourself in the bedroom. No. You're going to put on your makeup, you're going to go to that networking event, and you're going to get some numbers, and then you're going to follow up on people. Wanji? 
<laughs> you're going to follow up on people and then you're going to give them offers and then some of them will say they will not afford and then you're going to say I have a discount. From this side and from this side and from that side. And yes, Tompona. And before you know it, 10 years to come, you're being invited to platforms you never envisioned. And when you talk about your story, everyone is like, wow, let me pay the price. You know, let me, let me also do this. Let me walk the journey. Let me go through the process. Let me not make the shortcuts. Otherwise, there would have been shortcuts. Shortcuts to, to making money, right? Or shortcuts to having money. Yesterday, I was interviewing um, someone. Some of you will watch the interview. Uh, she's called Gloria Alele. And uh, she's, uh, she was Miss Tourism in Northern Uganda. And at some point, she grew up from a very uh, humble background and, you know, very poor. And she didn't even have money to go to school. And after some time, a man comes into her life. And this man was posh and super loaded to the extent, for the first time, she said, I would not even not, I didn't know even what to do with the money. Because nearly every week I was in a different country. Yeah, you will, you, will listen to, you, you, will li you will listen to the story. But this is what happens. After all that scenario, the man goes into a cheating spree. So she started fighting with women here and there. She's planning her wedding, but women are calling with babies. Women are calling with what? Meanwhile, when she, tells, uh, when she tells this man, she's like, uh, choose what you want. Do you want me or you don't want me? Oh, you know? And, you know, wh why, why are you even talking to them? Why are you talking to them? You're the problem, you know? Yes. <laughs> you're, the, yeah, you're the one who is the problem. Why are you following up on everyone? Definitely at some point, he totally ghosted her, got, her out, got, out of, got out of her life, married another person within the month, and you know, and you know, all things were happening. I know that we go through that, and when you watch this story, it will actually, you know, give you hope that you can bounce back at any point in your life, that it's never the end. Now, when I say that we've been equipped for battle, that we are not exceptional. Are we immune? No, we are not immune. We are going to go through certain things, but what God does not want is for you to take a shortcut in anything. He's like, I will take you through the process, but I will preserve you through the process. That even when you go through the shadow of the, to, through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because I will be with you. That means the shadow of death will be there. That means certain things are going to hover in your life as a people helper. And you're not just going to say, ah, God, you got a part of your burden and you gave it to me. And now I am here helping people. So please exempt me from all the problems. Hey, he's not going to exempt you from any problem. That there is a vaccine. You're like, God, give me that vaccine. So that when this thing is going around, it does not get to me. Uh-uh, there is no vaccine. <laughs> there is no vaccine for problems. There is no vaccine for, for loss. There is no vaccine for... Um, for wanting to throw in and give in and, and give in. There is no vaccine. She tried to kill herself. And she vomited the poison. And she tried the second time. <laughs> you get it? Because, I mean, she was tired. So we, we will go through so many things that the people of the, the other people are going through. But that should never, in any capacity, take away the fact that we have a dream. And that dream... Come rain, come sun, it is going to come to pass. You don't know when, but it is in the molding, okay? It is being built. God is refining it. But while he's refining it, he's refining you. So you're going through the refinery. <laughs> Who wants to go through the refinery? Yesterday I was on the men's call and I was telling them that it's the pruning season. But who wants pruning? Everyone wants the, the fruit season, right? Everyone wants to bear nice, juicy fruits. But if you want to bear the nice juicy fruits, you go through the pruning. So that we don't feed the dead branches. Because when you feed the dead branches, the kind of juice that would have gone into the, the good fruits, they, they are going, to, because when a tree, by the way, when all the old branches and the dead leaves and what, they are not cut off, the tree, half the time it is feeling there's a problem, we must revive this branch. That is why when a branch dies, it must be cut off so that the, the, the tree does not take all its resources and give it to a dead branch. 
Now, so many of us are in that same scenario. There are certain things that are dead in your life, and guess what? You are using all the juice that you have to revive them. Some of them are friendships that you must have cut off long time ago. Hmm? Yeah? Some of them are so like you, you always have an excuse of some sorts. Eh? But like do you know that it takes a lot of brain work to defend an excuse? Yeah. No, but it didn't happen. You know, I really wanted it to happen, but okay, okay, okay now it it didn't happen now. Do you know why do you, do people stammer when they are giving excuses? <laughs> because it takes a lot of brain power to actually sustain an excuse until, and you know, the person who is giving excuses, half the time they are looking at you in the eye to see whether you are accepting or not. When they see that you're not buying into their excuse, they explain even the more. So that you can, uh, well, and they will even uh, ask, what about, do, you, do, you, do, you, like, do, you, do you understand me? Eh? They will even bring examples. And you're like, nah, yeah. If you used that time, to the, snum, the stammering time and the brain power, to build something, wouldn't we be out of here? Hmm? There will be hungry children feeding in, in Karamoja. <laughs> if we quit some excuses in our lives, okay? So God is not going to give you what you want, but he will give you a want and a desire. And as you implement, then you are going to be, to get to where you want. Because then it is eventually coming, all right? And then... The dream that is inside of you is a divine responsibility. A divine responsibility. It's not things that God is letting you do. I had to go through my own life as like, hey, God, are you just letting me do these things? And the answer, do you know the answer I got? That if I was just letting you do, do those things, you'd have been off the hook like long time ago. Because when bad situations would come, I would be like, hey, but today it's so bad. You know, just, just, just chill. You know, just, you know, because then I am just letting you to do something. But when he says, it is your responsibility. I put it inside of you, but it is your responsibility. That means I am going to hold you accountable for the gift, for the dream that I deposited inside of you. I did not just put it there to be dormant. I did not just put it there to be only known by you. I want to unveil you. The islands are waiting. The nations are waiting. And people are not just waiting when they are at their happiest moment. People are waiting while they are committing suicide. And so he's saying, I'm even putting a time frame to it. That is why I'm going to make you sleepless. And that is why you're not going to have peace. You're not going to settle until you are active. <laughs> yeah, how many of us feel it? That whenever we are not doing anything about it, we actually feel like we are running mad. Yeah. Why? Because it is not your dream. It is not your dream. This is a calling, and a calling that you're going to be held responsible for. So the moment you know that is the moment you quit going by the feelings. Because the feelings lie. Emotions lie. Oh, I don't feel like doing this. Did God say you should feel like doing it? No. He expects you to show up in season and out of season. Emotions can be intoxicating. Emotions can delay. They can procrastinate. But this is not for procrastinating. You don't know how long you have. And guess what? You don't know how long the people you need to impact have. Just imagine if, you got, if God put a time on your hand and he was showing you there is someone you are supposed to impact but they are committing suicide at midnight. What would you do? They are losing a family that they should never have lost. You know, they are giving up on themselves. They are going to be admitted in Butabika maybe next week. What would you do? Before you even tell me, but me, I don't feel like doing content, you know, you, okay, things are very slow. Do you know that you will be every minute of every day, you will be putting on that camera and saying something and you're like, if this is how they receive this information, it doesn't need to be glamorous, it doesn't need to be beautiful, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be anything. What it has to be, it has to reach its user. But some of us are waiting until everything is glamorous, until everything is the way we see it, crystal, nice, like the people on Instagram, you know, you know, they really matter. Yes, it matters. And I know at some point I speak about that, but that is when there is leisure. 
but you're an ambulance. You who have been called to go and, and resuscitate someone who is at the point of death. And you're saying, you know what? Uh, you know, let me just take a longer route because now here there is, you know, let me just, I think I, I really like my inclination. I really like passing the other side, you know? No one is asking you where you like to pass. If you studied vectors, just recalibrate about the direction and say this is the easiest way. And the traffic rules are you can even go through the side that you're not supposed to go through. Why? Because saving lives is urgent. It's a matter of urgency. It's not something that you can play around. Like, uh, it's okay, I'll save the marriages that God told me to save when I have a, a better camera. So, uh -huh. you're waiting until one is, in, is, is, is a, a thousand miles away from each other because they have parted ways. <laughs> have you seen bad videos and you, you actually watched them until the end? Yeah. And you rewatched them again because they had a certain meaning? And sometimes you're like, God, I needed this. I needed to hear this. Now, that person was obedient. Whether it was good or it was not good, some of you are like, oh, I will put on uh, nice makeup and then I will... Guess what? Everyone that has told me they have to put on makeup, after dolling themselves up, I will call it dolling, after everything is intact, guess what? They are tired. <laughs> <laughs> like they are tired. Even a camera is annoying in front of them. And this is what happens. They're like, ah, let me just go out. Let me just, you know, let me. And then they will go out to a friend and chill and do what. Meanwhile, in their head, they knew what they were supposed to do. Yeah? But they didn't actually do it. So the calling, you are going to be held responsible for it. All right? God does not just expose you just for just. If I keep bringing this burden back to you and back to you again, and I keep bringing it back to you, it's because it's not an optional activity. If I keep waking you up, if I keep putting it on your heart to pray for it, if I keep putting you, it on a, in your heart that God are to take or loose, do you know that God can work with uh, the algorithms? Before you know it, everything you're seeing is in the same line. And you're like, but what is wrong? <laughs> eh? And yeah, you think it's coincidence. No, it's not coincidence. Let me tell you. Do you know that sometimes you will sit with a dream or to do something for so long and then you will find someone who has named it exactly like you wanted to name it and they will have the same packages and the same things and God is telling you he is trying to irritate you and frustrate you. And you're like, now you see. I was supposed to do this three months ago. And then you'll even call the people that you have told, C come, didn't I tell you about this idea? Do you know people are not going to believe us? They are going to think we copied it. <laughs> but... God has been bringing it and bringing it and you've been seeing different people trying to do things that are close to that and God is saying your idea has a place in the market. And guess what? You're just dragging your feet. You think you have too much time. You don't have too much time. You don't. You don't. Because sometimes when we put off what God has put on our hearts, let me tell you, do you know that after some time, he will cause another person he will plant the same dream in another person's heart and he will cause them to activate it. He will cause them to activate it. That means that when God is pouring grace, he's not pouring it on one person. So when grace is poured, can you be the one that says, this idea, might, it's not, we have not yet taken it through the panel beating, through the refining, but can you put it out? That is why in this cohort I have decided we are not going for uh, because I am trusting you. You are mature people and so you're going to do the work. No. No graduation without a course. No graduation without, yeah, without an ebook. As in, I must have something tangible that shows that you're going to. E and by the way, we must work together through the pre launch strategy, through the launch strategy, until you sign up your first clients. Yes. <laughs> what will I have done if I just give you knowledge? If, because in the second part we are going to talk about it, mastery, is that it goes from information to implementation. So that means I will have failed you if you cannot implement. I will. So it is not just for just, it is not just an activity, it is a divine responsibility. Okay? And...
Sometimes we feel like our input does not match the result. But let me tell you, put in anyway. Put in the effort. And I will tell you this, no experience is wasted. In God's eyes, everything that you go through, and I want you to understand me clearly, everything that you go through has a benefit in his kingdom. Every situation, it is not wasted. You didn't just go through it, you didn't just bump. Because after, some, after you are strong, you are going to strengthen others. The examples that you're going to give, the lessons that you will have learned, some of you have experiences and lessons that you have learned. And that is not, God is not going to put it to waste. No. He's using that to help another person to not get into that situation. All right? So no situation is a waste. If I take you back to the story of Nehemiah, when, God, uh, when uh, the king looked at him and said that, you know what? I, I mean, I really, uh, I look like this because Jerusalem is in shambles. And then the king asked him, what do you want? This is what happens. Uh, how many of us know Nehemiah has asked us for a series of things, right? Do you know that he asked for timber? And when after timber is trans transport, <laughs> after transport, bodyguard, you know, just imagine he is in exile. Hmm? He is in exile. But this is what the Bible says actually that uh, before he even responded to the king, when the king asked him, before he responded to the king, he made a prayer and was looked favor a prayer for favor because he was like go before me that when i speak these words when they get into the king's ears he will want to make it easy for me so that i will be able to actually go and do the things that i i need to be able to do now so many of us there are so many people that we even don't know that are going to be our destiny helpers we didn't know about, but they are going to be the source of stirring up, the source of discontent, the source of, you know, pushing you into your next level of greatness. But some of us never even dare to ask. When someone asks you right now, how can I help you? Do you know some of us will fumble? Be like, uh, now, uh, uh, okay, now, I think I'm going to get back to you, get back to you. You know, I will, I will send everything in our WhatsApp, and sometimes we have very good ways of dodging. You know, I had the whole plan on my laptop, but you know, it blacked out, but now I'm going to send it on WhatsApp. I'm, I'm going to send it, and sometimes even the Destiny Helpers have a way of reminding us, but I have not yet received. And then you're like, uh, you know, I got home very late, but I'm going to send in the morning as soon as. And my goodness. So what do you want God to do? So can we write our plans? Can we, that when someone says, for example, there's a time I actually told, I told, told Tim, I was like, where do you envision this thing going? And I was like, you know what? This whole thing, yes, I know I'm doing these things, I'm, ent I'm mentoring, but I know there are people that will want to come and they will even need to be rehabilitated. So I'm looking at a, a rehabilitation center. And when I said I was looking for a, re um, I'm looking at a rehabilitation center, he dreamt big with me and was like, but do you know that in that rehabilitation center, we can even have a church? In that rehabilitation center, do you know that we can even, you know, we can even build mama a house close by so that he can be in charge of the church and then he's supervising the rehabilitation center. And guess what? The next thing is he's buying four acres of land on a hill in Lugazi somewhere. I even made a video about it. I went and toured the land and surveyed the land and payments were made in my name and financing a vision that you are so clear about that I want to be able and I don't want it to be like people come and play, pay a lot of money. I want it to be for the less privileged people. That there will even be a school for people who can't go to school, who can't afford to go to other schools. So when Habakkuk says, write, write your vision, that whoever reads it will even run away. But let me tell you, just like I said, no experience is wasted. In God's eyes, no experience is wasted. So he spoke his desire and he actually got the things that he was supposed to get. He got the help that he needed to get. Some of us, we never take prayer as an important thing. Yeah? 
in any situation. You're going to pitch, you're going to say something, but even if it's under, some of us, uh, we want to, you know, I want to pray and fast. There are certain situations that don't call for fasting and praying, like it's an immediate thing. Like it might, I was like, God, give me grace before these people. That God, this idea, I need to, to see how I can put it together. And yes, the fasting can be there, but fasting takes a time, you know? Some things are quite quickly. So when you get, that is why I say, when you get an idea, put it down. Do you know sometimes when you don't put it down, it evaporates from your head and it will never come back. That even if you try to remember and you remember the statement, it will never make the same meaning ever again. But while you conceived it in that moment, it made a lot of meaning. It felt like, you know what? Wow, this is a life-changing idea. And all of a sudden, the life-changing idea has evaporated. And you actually don't want to do that. Okay? So don't ask for just simple things. Ask for big things. Ask for platforms. Ask for collaboration. Ask for, as in, knock the door. You can never know which door actually opens. But if you see it and you're like, you know, I'm an introvert. So uh -huh, you want us to read that you're an introvert so that we can do what? We can bring services on a silver platter? Huh? You want clients to read that you're an intro introvert so that they can come and what? Sign up for services that they don't know about? <laughs> huh? So that is when you're like, you know what? This clock that has been on me of, intro of being an introvert, it's high time it, stay it stays where? There. I'm going to get into a group of people that believe me, that can also elevate me. If we are to dance, we are going to dance. If we are to lift legs, we are going to lift legs. But well, we, I am going to do something that is out of the ordinary to make sure that I also get the results that are out of, that are extraordinary. Some of us want to, be, to do ordinary things and get extraordinary results. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. When he started building, that is when the distractions start coming, right? But this is what I got. And that is why I say that you have been built for this. You have been built for this. Anything will try to tear you up. Anything will try to discourage. The battles that are going to come are so many. But you build with one hand and you swing the sword with another. Wanji? You, so you swing the sword and you nail the nail. You swing the sword and you're using the hammer. You swing the sword and you're using whatever it is. You're creating content. You swing the sword but you are showing up. And you're like, yeah, I'm slaying some enemies. Eh? But I am building. Why? Because I think there's a time in my life that I got to understand that whatever I was building was not mine. Okay? It was not mine. It was not just for me. It was not optional. And so I got to a place and I was like, okay, these are not just normal battles. They are actually distract me, distracting me from something. From something bigger. So if I do not wake up in the realm of the spirit to know that there is a bigger battle that I am fighting and just know that, oh, people, oh, simanyi what what, you are about to know nyigida babu ereri. No! The devil knows your ability more than you even know it. <laughs> he knows your ability. He knows how much gifted. But we are in our shells, you know, feeling good about ourselves. And so when I got to know that this is a battle, I got to know that, by the way, you fight, but again, you, don't, you do not fight like people who do not have wisdom. Right? Because last time I told you that... Most of the battles that we fight are not just spiritual battles, but people with two feet, right? And I told you that some of you are sleeping with your enemies, <laughs> with the enemies of the dream that God has put inside of you. Some of you are dating them. Some of you, are, you know, are you married to them? And then some of you, by the way, you're just, you know, dilly-dallying around su such, such people. But again, I remember telling you that our battles are not to go and get a dagger and dig into someone's heart. No, your battle should not because the moment you fight a battle that you are not supposed to fight, then God is punishing you together with the enemy that is supposed to fight. Do you understand me? Because then some battles demand that you stoop low in order to fight them. Neda, just imagine, someone has come insulting you. And you're like, you know what, mm -mm, me a life changer. Me, a uh, uh, what? Uh, one that is gifted. You know, God gifted me even in speaking. So I am going to give you your level. I am going to give you a piece of my mind. So then you give them a piece of your mind. 
And the people that were holding you in high regard, all of a sudden they're like, she can't even say such words, <laughs> you know? Now they have actually lured you into a place that you are not supposed to be. Because you cannot fight with low lives and win with their strategy. Right? Because it demands that you become lower. As in when he goes low, you go? But is that what you're supposed to do? Vengeance belongs to? So now if you want to fight your battles, he is going to let you fight your battles. But guess what? You're going to be punished just like your enemy was going to be punished. Because then two wrongs do not make a... So as a people helper, as a business builder, one that has a thriving business, one has, when they bring the frogs at your shop, sweep them, pray, go and pour them. They will bring them tomorrow, sweep them, take them. They will, until they will be like, yeah, people have told me that. Tanzania. And in my heart of hearts, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, because I, I, I have the greatest witch doctor. That is good. <laughs> he knows my being. He knows everything I am supposed to be. So I leave him to actually fight the battles. But many people, helpers, have lost it while they are bickering and fighting battles that they are not supposed to fight. So how are you going to help people while you are busy putting them down? Okay? So in this case, you fight, but you do not fight the way other people are actually fighting. Some of us fight in prayer, right? We, fast, we, we fight in fasting. We fight in being better at what God has called us to be. There is no better fight than that. Where you are equipped, where you are loaded with the information, where you implement, where you show up, even your enemy sees you. Do you know that sometimes your enemies are on your, your accounts? They're like, now, with what has happened, I think, and then you, you are showing up, and I, I think the enemy calls it showing off. It's like, <laughs> this is really showing off, eh? because what is this? I thought you were down. Do you know that showing up is fighting? Doing what the devil or what the enemy does not expect you to do is actually fighting. Okay? So, I need you to know that this is a tact of the enemy to distract you from something that is great. But, fight as you build. Because the moment you decide to just focus on fighting, it's the building that you're being distracted from. The building of the empire, the building of the bigger business, so the more profitable business, of the coaching business, of the speaking business, of, of traveling the world, that building is the one that you're being distracted from. So do not allow to be distracted from that building, okay? Make sure that you go ahead. I want us to run very quickly through the things that um, you have to swing against. Number one is discouragement. Discouragement. Building is hard enough. Sometimes... You get tired of fighting. You know, you get somewhere and you're like, but God, I'm tired of fighting. Like, I am tired. Can you give me one good week where I don't have to, to fight? But guess what? The battles of people helpers are many. Uh, the things that we have to fight against, the things that we have to, to swing against the, the, the sword, eh? that is discouragement, okay? Can I have just one good season? No, God is not giving you just one good season. <laughs> because he's building something impactful and everything impactful must be fought, okay? So get used to it. Nail the hammer and swing the sword. Number two, deficiencies. Some of us, we feel like we do not have the experience to build, right? Nehemiah had never been a builder. He was a cup bearer in the king's palace. But now he has, it, he has a dream to rebuild Jerusalem. He should have said, I am not the one that... Do you know that sometimes you're like, but I am not the one that is qualified to do this. But again, when you look at the people around you, you're like, but uh, at least I am better than some people. <laughs> and then you talk yourself into it because apparently you look at everyone and you're like, there is no salvation here. I am the one who is best suited to actually take the lead in this place. So fight against deficiencies because the enemy is going to convince you with a lot of imposter syndrome that you cannot do it, you're not good enough, you're not qualified, you're not experienced, you know, you're not the greatest leader, you know, you, he will bring all those whispers and bring everything that you have failed at. But even when you have failed, okay, 
It's you and the devil and God maybe that knows it. So get out there and do something else. Because there is someone who will, tell, who will tell you, my goodness, whatever you talked about resonated with me. That means you have helped someone. Okay? So the deficiencies. God never appoints someone without assessment. He did not appoint you without assessing you. So when he assessed you, he found you the perfect fit for that dream and for that calling. So you're not going to, you're not going to be the wise acre that informs God of, about what to do and what not to do. So when he says, I have chosen you, just say, I am chosen. <laughs> yeah, and then appear for battle and say, you know what, I'm equipped for this. Even when you don't know whether you're equipped, you're like, you know what? Yeah, I trust in God. You know, he will, he will come through for me. The other thing that we have to fight against are the distractions. The three times they came down to Nehemiah to tell him that, you know what, you should stop this. Come, let's discuss. And he says that three times I gave the same, uh, the, the same answer. Three times I gave the same responses. So certain things, it's all about delaying. You know that even when your dream is delayed and your ministry is delayed, there are already people that have suffered, even you. During the delay, you are suffering. But when the fruition, just like the Bible says that um, delayed hope, okay? How, it makes you sick. It makes you sick. I like the Luganda version because You know, so you do not want to get to a place where you have delayed your own fruition or arrival into what God has prepared you. And all of a sudden, you get frustrated along the way and you want to give in and... Like, how are you going to do? I know there are people, God will put destiny helpers that will help resuscitate you, that will help help you. Where do strong people go to? Do you know that there are so many, some of you are strong people and some of you are like, other people can come to me for help, but who do I go to? Because when I tell them my problems, now they're going to start discussing my problems, right? Some of you feel like, you know what, I have nowhere to go to. And that is why we have communities like this. And that is why we must fight to make sure deficiencies don't swallow us. That is why we must fight to make sure discouragement does not uh, swallow us. And we must make sure that distractions do not swallow us and take the place of what we must build in our lives. Has that encouraged you enough to stay the course, to not give up? Okay, not give up on yourself and not give up on the people that God has called you to actually serve and to help. All right? Love you.